Hello everyone, uh, I am Elisa Antila Gatti, Wi-Fi Modern Service Manager, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this info share about Wi-Fi Modern. Wi-Fi Modern is one of the services that tries to help network administrators to manage problems with users while using Wi-Fi. It is a service that has been seen as a solution by many network administrators. This Jian service has managed to have a good performance, especially thanks to your contribution, so our user contribution. But like any service, there is still room to improve in various aspects. Wi-Fi Mon has developed various novel, interesting features based on the user feedback. Through this info share, we hope to drive participation to make this service worthy of competing with its competitors. Today, we will focus mainly on our user experiences during the work they have done with this service. We are pleased to welcome to this panel Renu, which is one of our users, Uganda NREN, ASNET AM, Armenian NREN, and of course, one of our main developers of this service. We hope that also other users like RNP and CERN could join in our next InfoShare, maybe to share their experience. Right now, I would like to ask Nikos, one of our main developers of this service, to make his presentation. He is going to inform us more about the new developments and new features that Wi-Fi Mon has achieved or developed lately. So, Nikos, please. Okay, hi everyone. I'll provide you the overview of Wi-Fi Mon. I'm Nikos, I'm from NTUA, which is a university in Athens, Greece. And uh, let's start. Wi-Fi Mon is a joint service since 2020, and it provides open source tools in order to monitor the performance of uh, Wi-Fi networks. Uh, Wi-Fi Mon uh, combines uh, two kinds of measurements. The first uh, type of measurements is uh, include crowdsourcing, and we let's say call it software probes, where Wi-Fi performance is reported as experienced by users. So these are the end users roaming the network: tablets, laptops, mobile phones things like that, real users. But also to complement uh, these measurements and provide, let's say, baseline comparisons, we have a second approach that uh, uses hardware probes, which are devices which are placed at fixed locations of the Wi-Fi network and uh, report performance similarly to the crowdsourced approach. Optionally, for in order to enrich uh, the analysis, for example, to provide throughput uh, per access point within a network, uh, in uh, specific networks, such as uh, 802.1x networks, uh, for example, Edrom, you can incorporate data from Redis and DHP logs. The main contributions of Wi-Fi Mon is that uh, you can measure uh, you can measure Wi-Fi performance independently of uh, specific access point vendors, for example, Cisco or Juniper uh, devices. You can detect Wi-Fi throughput degradation, and this may be useful for administrators in order to enhance uh, performance for example, by installing more access points where appropriate. And it is, uh, we brand it lately as a smart controller, a smart way to uh, provide distributed control and configuration of the hardware props from uh, a centralized location. Compared to other uh, monitoring tools, uh, Wi-Fi monitors uh, from the end user perspective, it reports the end user experience, the Wi-Fi network as experienced by, end by the end user. Another important advantage of Wi-Fi Mon is that there are no requirements to install a specific application or for the end user to intervene. For example, measurements can be triggered without downloading anything from uh, the App Store or without pressing a button. This is the end user intervention. They are triggered automatically. And finally, there is flexible control configuration of the hardware props in a distributed manner. Comparing Wi-Fi Mon with a popular tool, the speed test provided by Okla, you can see that Wi-Fi Mon automatically triggers measurements by visiting a website, uh, the website that is it is embedded, of course, with Wi-Fi Mon technology. But instead, in Okla speed test, you have to press go, uh, an end user has to press uh, uh, has to trigger the measurement. It is done. It is not done automatically. And of course, in Wi-Fi Mon, the results are collected by the Wi-Fi administrator. But in Okla speed test, the results remain to end users, and no one is notified about the performance of the Wi-Fi network. This is, a, this is an overview, the baseline design, let's say, of Wi-Fi Mon. You can see that Wi-Fi Mon consists of four components. The software probes, which is a term used for the crowdsource measurements. 
the hardware props, which are placed at fixed locations and monitor the network from uh, these specific points. The analysis server, which is a central collector of Wi-Fi mode, processor, everything is stored there, and it provides visualizations to Wi-Fi mode administrators. And the Wi-Fi mode server, which is uh, another, another component that includes the test code required for, uh, for the performance measurements. Delving more into the Wi-Fi on the server, the purpose of, uh, of this component is to provide the code and test data for the performance measurements. And it is based mainly on JavaScript technology. In order to trigger the performance measurements, you have to place appropriate HTML script tags uh, in a frequently visited website, pointing to the specific test tools of Wi-Fi on. These test tools, the, current, the test tools that we are currently using are from uh, from a large organization, let's say. The one is called Boomerang and it's developed by Akamai. And the other one is uh, called Speedtest and it is developed by a popular uh, GitHub repository which is called Liberspeed. Uh, when, uh, when mentioning the frequently visited websites, uh, maybe some examples are a campus website, the main website of uh, university, let's say, a conference agenda, that to, uh, a website including the conference agenda. We have tried a lot of times in the past with such uh, websites uh, or any other popular or frequently visited website. Another important factor with, uh, uh, with the Wi-Fi the server is where to place it. The test server should be placed close to the monitor network. And this is because the round trip time between the end devices and the test server is included in the results. So if it's high, it may, let's say, increase the uh, reported measurements. However, even if this is not possible, the uh, Wi-Fi mon captures relative performance changes. For example, you can see that here the Wi-Fi mon drops. Uh, sorry, the Wi-Fi performance drops. Or here I have a good Wi-Fi performance. The main idea of Wi-Fi mon is not to measure exact values, but to measure these relative differences to see where uh, Wi-Fi is underperforming. Now about the props, uh, I mentioned before that they monitor the Wi-Fi network for fixed points and they provide the uh, baseline measurements in order to compare with the car source ones. The measurements that are triggered are similar to the ones of uh, the software probes, the end users. I mean that they are also using the Akamai Boomerang and the Limber Speed, speed test, test Tools. But apart from these measurements, you can also include additional data about the monitor, the SSID, as well as nearby SSIDs. Uh, lately, we have also included T1 measurements, which is a standardized protocol to, uh, to, to measure latency between two endpoints. We have also included system data, for example, CPU, memory, uh, SD card uh, storage information, things like that. And the measurements are triggered periodically based on cron tabs. Of course, this technology can run into any general purpose uh, Unix uh, system. But we have currently tested uh, Wi-Fi on hardware probes using Raspberry Pi devices of version 3 and 4. Now, going uh, this was the main part of the overview. I will go deeper to provide some results from a recent pilot which happened at Yerevan, Armenia, in cooperation with uh, ASNET AM, uh, whose, uh, let's say, representatives are here today. This was the third Wi-Fi mode pilot. The first two pilots were at TNC 19 and at the Symposium 2020. The third pilot uh, monitored Red Room at uh, the IIAP, which is an institute uh, at the National Academy of Sciences of Armenia. The duration of the pilot was uh, approximately 15 days, and there were monitored around 50 to 100 people, that included researchers, professors, engineers, and students. There was a conference during these days, so this is why uh, the number was increased to 100 people. Uh, the, the setup included just one hardware probe, a Raspberry Pi 4 model, and uh, you can see the information of the analysis server and the server. The goals, of course, were to experiment with newly introduced wi features and help the administrators identify interesting points that require further inspection. This way, I will also provide an overview of the wi on user interface. You can see here that it is the overview tab, which summarizes the received measurements on a daily basis. You can see that uh, during this day, we received 318 measurements. You can see here uh, the average uh, measurements of uh, the measurements of average upload throughput reported by the hardware probe. Uh, you can see here that the results of both test tools, Boomerang and LibreSpeed, are aggregated. We provide the average here. 
And you can see that some interesting points are uh, depicted here with a blue circle. So you can see that we have a lot of uh, interesting values here, significant drops uh, in the chart. For example, you can see here that uh, uh, in these three circles, the last ones, you can see that the performance, the upload throughput was very close to zero or zero, of course. You can also see that Wi-Fi Mon reports jitter. You can see that the a jitter value was increased in uh, October 2nd. You may also see here that uh, this was not very visible. Ah, sorry, it is visible here. Uh, it can correlate with the upload measurements. And uh, of course, we are also reporting measurements apart from the testers that I mentioned, the Boomerang and the LibreSpeed. We are we're reporting uh, measurements directly from the wireless network interface card. You can see here that there is uh, the, the link quality uh, is decreased. However, it does not capture the performance drops reported in the upload throughput measurements. You can see here that we have a lot of other interesting values, but here we only have a single value. And another interesting feature that we have included in Wi-Fi Mon is the average number of Wi-Fi users. You can see here that uh, during uh, uh, the weekend we see uh, very very few people there at the venue, but during the conference days depicted with the green rectangle, we can see an increased number of users. This uh, this feature, of course, is uh, is a rough approximation. It is reported by the ARP Scan util utility in Linux. Uh, for, for those who have used ARP scan, uh, you can see that the, the, it reports the devices that may be both connected to Wi-Fi or wired networks, but uh, we have the assumption that the wired network users are more or less stable. So the differences capture the relative changes in Wi-Fi users. The installation of Wi-Fi Mon is very easy. We have automated all the components using an Ansible playbook, and the duration of the installation takes around 15 to 20 minutes. And now I'm going more to delve into the features that are used for uh, configuring and controlling probes from a remote location. The old approach had a lot of, of configuring the probes, had a lot of uh, drawbacks. For example, a major drawback was that it was extremely time consuming, especially for NAT networks. For example, if you wanted to uh, change something, change a parameter in a hardware probe, you had to go where the probe is with your screen, uh, connect to the device, uh, plug in your keyboard, manually change everything. And also it included a lot of files which uh, had to be edited manually and this was hard and um, may, um, and uh, all and uh, frequently led to mistakes. So the novel approach is uh, more centralized. Let's say you can rem you can dis you can configure and control the probes from a centralized point, the Wi-Fi analysis server, in a remote and user-friendly manner. And also we provide flexibility to control probes behind the networks because behind the networks uh, probes have private IP addresses and it's more difficult to to find them. Uh, you, uh, it's, it's not impossible, but you need split DNS, you need to, to access to NAT logs, things like that. With our new approach, you can control probes without these things, even if they are behind NAT networks. And to do that, we use SALT, which is a configuration tool that is uh, more or less similar to the frequently used Ansible, but provides uh, some, uh, some advantages. The first advantage is that SALT establishes application layer communication. It is based on, it is agent based. You have to install uh, agents both in the Wi-Fi analysis server and at the probes. The Wi-Fi analysis server is called the salt master and the probes are called the salt minions. So these devices communicate in the application layer. This means that you configure, you can configure the probes remotely uh, from a centralized location. You can find them everywhere, even if they are behind NAND networks. And public IP addresses are not required, and this IP space is conserved. Another advantage is that SALT includes a built-in message broker that's called CRMQ. This means that you can configure probes in parallel, regardless of their number. Even if you have three probes or 10, 20, 30 probes, uh, theoretically, you will do the configuration in uh, the same time. And in order to stop manually editing the files, we have configured uh, appropriate user interfaces that uh, in the, at the backend they have Jinja 2 templates. 
which uh, directly generate, let's say, the configuration files and transfer them from the web analysis server to the hardware probes based on uh, tools provided by Solt. Lately, we have also provided some, uh, a problem with Wi-Fi mode is that uh, Wi-Fi administrators are expected to manually inspect the measurements and there were no mechanisms to automatically detect important throughput deviations. So in our current version, 2.2.0, we try to provide some mechanisms to automate the time series analysis. Uh, we've provided an anomaly detection feature that is mainly based on a method that's called Hampel. This is not something very advanced, let's say. The, this uh, method assesses deviations from a median value evaluated in specific time windows. For example, you can see here, based on the pilot of ASNet AM, you can see that you can easily get from user interface uh, red dots that uh, point significant values of anomalies, let's say. And if you want, you can specify stricter parameters, for example, uh, a larger standard deviation from the median value, where you can get the more the most important uh, points. And the final uh, a final feature that we are trying to develop now, which was uh, requested by our users at uh, Uganda from Renu, is a, 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 something like a looking glass that is also based on salt. Uh, you can uh, it is executed from the Wi-Fi analysis server. The first step is that you can locate the active probes wherever they are, with a utility provided by Sal that's called test ping. You just ping the minions, but not an ICMB ping, an application layer ping, and you can get their whereabouts, and you can execute any Linux command uh, as if you were in the uh, hardware probes, ping, trace route, dig, if config, or get routing table information. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, the homepage of Wi-Fi on is this one. And you can always contact us with the mailing list. Thank you, Nikos, for your presentation as an overview of Wi-Fi Mon and the new features we developed lately. I hope that information provided is useful. And now it's the turn of Renu, Uganda Nairan, our newest user of this service, Wi-Fi Mon service. Fortunately for us, today we have two users who are at two extremes, the youngest and the oldest one. One of the oldest, yes. Let's welcome first the youngest one, and uh, I'm pleased to welcome William from Uganda, Nairobi. So, uh, William. Thank you very much, uh, Elisa and Taylor and Nikos, um, for inviting us here to showcase the things that we've done with uh, White Man One. Um, allow me to share my screen here briefly. Okay. Um, Today, we're going to talk about um, how we're using the tool uh, Wi-Fi Moon to monitor one of the more recent deployments of Ventirom in the country, which is Metro Ventirom, um, and understand uh, that basically what has been happening. So we're just going to go through the background and some of the objectives of the project of Metro Ventirom and uh, how we're using Wi-Fi Moon and any of the observations and uh, challenges we've had. So, um, in roughly the pandemic area um, period, we had um, a way we wanted to respond to users trying to kind of access their um, resources for learning and um, continuing basically studying and working from home um, through the use of NDRO. So we came up with a solution to kind of open up the solution from just being locked up in campus to everywhere a person is. And the target at the time was metropolitan area. So any kind of city or um, major area of interest, like let's say shopping mall or something, is where we deployed it. Um, however, the, the constraint we had at the time was that we didn't have any kind of infrastructure in the, in the country. Basically, we were relying on uh, external service providers who had presence in those areas to be able to deploy Edirom um, through them back to the NREN, which is REN. So that is how this whole concept of Metro Edirom came to be. Um, so having set up a partnership with the service providers, our aim now was to make sure that our users, the Edirom users around the entire country, actually enjoy Edirom outside campus. 
So we had to find a way to monitor their experience as they're using it through other people's infrastructure and also make sure that wherever they are and wherever we say Edurum is, um, it's actually there and it actually works. And in case they have issues, we can troubleshoot um, them through the use of the tool. So that's how we ended up landing on um, Wi-Fi Mon and I uh, wanted to have it um, as our, our, you could say, tool or weapon to do this kind of work. So um, to do that, we had to kind of set up a test bed um, where we could test this and confirm that it actually does what it says it does for us in the Edirone, um scenario. So basically, from the time we deployed it in 2020 up to now, we managed to now uh, get a, an opportunity to deploy our own access points instead of relying on uh, service providers. So now, given that opportunity, we actually had the means to control the environment, so to speak. So we had infrastructure to connect them back to the REN network where people can access Edero. Um, yeah, so this particular test, we did it in our office space. Um, we set up an access point, which uh, basically would be pushing the Metro Edirum service to office and um, set up some probes in office as well. And we're also using our own laptops to kind of do the crowdsourced tests that uh, Nick was hinted on. Um, so we set up a server for the test testing and analysis and also used the established Edirum radius and DHCP servers for the correlation um, to do this kind of test. So um, as you could see in, the, in some of the observations we did with the hardware probes, uh, basically this was these were tests that were coming through uh, in the office space. So in the area that you see um, that pink up and down kind of curve, that was when people had come back from home, they're now going into office uh, throughout the day until lunchtime. So from there, we could really see uh, an up uh, increasing throughput. So probably people were downloading a lot more content uh, than of course when they are back home. And um, the previous day, which I think is March 18th, the throughput at that time was a lot higher because of course it was nighttime, people were at home, but uh, during the day, of course it lowered a bit and fluctuated a bit, uh, a lot more. Um, for the, Ping scans, uh, rather ping uh, round trip time. Of course, it correlates a bit more because as of course, when you're in office, um, when the network is more active, um, the, the round trip time tends to fluctuate a lot more. But uh, of course, when it's nighttime, it means that uh, not the network is not that active and therefore um, it's a bit more stable. Uh, so this one was an observation we did with the crowdsourced version. So us using our laptops to go to the, the site, we set up to it's we use a monitoring tool. So that that tool has a web page that we created where we applied those JavaScript test uh, tools. So we did that um, with our laptops, and these were the results still, but. Um, I think the, the challenge we were trying to get was whose device was connecting at the time and what tests did they do. So as you could see there, there's a client IP address that is encrypted, which is of course good by design because of privacy issues. But in terms of troubleshooting, it kind of um, needs us to do a little bit more work to, tra to track down a particular person who's having issues. So that, that was the, the major observation there. But the tool works and we managed to get some kind of uh, readings out of it. So one of the challenges that we kind of faced was uh, the fact that we do we did Metro Edirum in a NAT environment. It means that uh, people who connect to Edirum outside of campus, uh, anywhere in the city, will get a private IP address and um, not to a public IP address. So in, in the correlation statistics we were gathering, we noticed that um, in the Basically, from the front end tests, the one that were crowdsourced through the test server, we could get the gateway IP address. But um, in the DHCP logs and radius logs, we'll get the private 
IP address. So it would kind of mess up the whole point of correlation for our use case uh, where NAT is involved. So that becomes an, a bit of a challenge, but um, we are trying to kind of work around that. Maybe we might change the setup to become a uh, public space, but um, uh, that is yet to, uh, to be debated on. But that's the challenge that we kind of um, realized. And we wanted the correlation uh, capability because we wanted to really confirm that uh, this user is in a particular location and um, they are facing this particular issue. So if we isolate the person and say, maybe it's a device problem or it's a general problem. Everyone is facing the same issue. So that was the, one of the significant challenges we faced. Um, the other challenges we had were to do with, um, of course, the acquisition of probes, because we know they are more reliable than actually having a user to go somewhere and test that Adrian is working through the, uh, the website. It's much easier to have a probe that you can command to do whatever you want. Uh, but that, of course, requires a bit of more budgeting on our end. But um, I think if we can present Wi-Fi Mon as a proper use case for metro monitoring, I think that one can be worked on. So the other challenge we faced was, um, I think, in the way that some of the internal tools that Wi-Fi Mon uses uh, versus the capabilities of the operating system on the hardware probe. So the, uh, in the documentation, the tools and the, the Raspberry Pi image that was recommended allows to use the Persona tools for extra more detailed testing. However, uh, the, the limitations of the operating system on it didn't allow us to connect to WPA to enterprise SSIDs, of which Adrian is a mark. So we had to kind of get the uh, get a brand new Raspbian image uh, from the, the Raspbian uh, Raspberry Pi website, which is based on Debian 12, and discovered that actually Persona tools are not yet supporting Debian 12. So we had to um for the use of Trump tools, which is not good on our end because we want to get as many details as possible, but um, we can try to, to find a way we can reverse engineer certain things. Um, the other things are more managerial, so things to do with configuring the Raspberry Pi to connect to a WP to enterprise access point, uh, rather SSID a bit more manually than usual. Just if, you, if you're familiar with Raspberry Pis, you'd know that you can basically configure a necessary ID with a pre-shared key within a file and then automatically start the, Ras the Raspberry Pi and to connect to that SSID. But for enterprise, it might not uh, be as straightforward. Um, the other thing is uh, we kind of had issues with the Raspberry Pis being intermittent in connectivity. Sometimes it would black out after some time and uh, we'd lose some of the tests um, in that period. So we came to a, a conclusion that probably the prone jobs were a bit too frequent. They would happen a lot more frequently and thus utilize a lot more resources on the Raspberry Pis. So we kind of cut down on the, the, the rate at which they, they fall. So that means that there will be a gap, a bigger gap in the testing and therefore we might not know that at a certain point, the Raspberry Pi, um, rather the, net, the network maybe got an issue, but in the readings, we don't see anything. So that's another area that we had to, to circumvent. But overall, I think that the tool is, is actually going to help us now that we have our own infrastructure that we can deploy and monitor. I think it can can do what we want. Then just the, the final two things of uh, confirming if you can use the persona tools and the auto configuration of WPA to enterprise um, are the things that I think we're yet to finalize as we also work on the NAT problem for, for our use case. Um, other than that, I think the the majority of, of the, the tests we've done uh, show that tool to be promising. We just need to map it now to the Edgerom use case, which might not be the same with WPA2 PSK. Um, but yeah, I think that tool um, has good potential. Thank you. Thank you, William, for your presentation. Uh, it was very interesting and a pleasure to see your achievement while 
implementing this service. Uh, if I could just ask a question to you, uh, yeah. even though the, as a summary I could say from your presentation, uh, what could be a, a feature that uh, you think is missing from Wi-Fi One and would, would facilitate your Wi-Fi performance monitoring efforts? Um, I think majority of the, the Wi-Fi One features are quite useful. I think the only other things that we, that are left to be worked on are really minor. So something like NAT support or um, uh, tracking the actual users through um, other things that maybe don't don't require R, uh, as Nikos mentioned. Other than that, I think the the tool really has the 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 things that uh, a network engineer needs to 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 troubleshoot their network with. Really. Yeah, um, especially the, the point that Nikos mentioned about um, implementing the salt capabilities to do uh, dig and IPI config, that one really adds on to, to the capabilities of Wi-Fi mode. So yeah, um, with the exception of NAT and the other stuff, really, I think the, the, the tool can do what people want. Yeah. Thank you, William, for your yeah. feedback. Yeah. Uh, Thank and you, now. Too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now, last but not least, in my country, we have an expression, sweetness is left, left for the end. I call those who have trusted in this service, and I also want to thank them for the support they gave lately in the workshop organized in Yerevan. It's, uh, I now I want to uh, invite Samuel from ASNet AM, which is Armenian NRI, one of our Wi-Fi users. So, Samuel? Hello, I'm uh, Samuel from Austin Tam, and currently with this presentation I will show you shortly about our Wi-Fi mode current state and our future plans. Please, Robert, is, could you share the presentation? Yes, thank you. We can see second our slide. Uh, in the beginning, we want to share with you some information about our network in ASNET AM. Uh, ASNET AM has an external link with Jump and with global internet, which bandwidth is 10 gigabit per second. Also, it has internal external link with RMIX, which is Armenian exchange point. And with it, we also have 10 gigabit per second bandwidth link. Also, we have an additional a link that has two gigabit per second bandwidth. Asnet M uh, contains 60 organizations, which are scientific, educational, or some government uh, governmental organizations. And they are located in five cities, and they are connected with fiber lines, which length is 60 kilometers. And the internal, this internal link has bandwidth with 10 gigabits per second speed. Uh, we can see next slide. What about our current state of Wi-Fi mode? Uh, ASNETM has been using Wi-Fi mode for two and a half years, since 2021. Currently, we have a Wi-Fi mode analysis and Wi-Fi mode test server, WAC and WTS shortly. And they are installed in one node. And currently, we use the latest version, version 2.2.0. We also have Raspberry Pi hardware probes. They are located in two major probes of Ascent AM. And uh, also, we use software probe, WSP, which is embedded in frequently visited website. And that collects crowd source measurements from laptops phones. Also, uh, in conclusion, we can say that we by this monitoring, uh, we monitor more than 100 Wi-Fi users, and they are researchers, professors, engineers, students. In the next slide, we can see that we also uh, provide Yadu Rome Wi-Fi roaming environment to Armenian research educational organizations and its uh, main service of ASNET-AM and 
um, federated service of Gedrom are hosted and supported by SNET IM. That's why it was so important to us to set up Wi-Fi mode to monitor Gedrom Wi-Fi network. So currently our Wi-Fi mode environment is configured to monitor that Gedrom Wi-Fi network. Now we can see some excerpts from our monitoring. You can see the download, upload, throughput uh, graphics, which are collected, which are collected by hardware props, which are uh, located in two our major props. You can see, and there clearly shows uh, the some drops or where the sta stable how stable is our wi-fi network also we can see the average jitter bitrate and so more and this is just some excerpts from our monitoring and some examples you have already seen in nico's presentation what about our future plans we are planning to involve other scientific and educational organizations in our network to use Wi-Fi mode. Also, we are planning to study and launch correlating performance measurements with radius and DHCP logs. And we hope that Wi-Fi uh, mode service will be a uh, stable and useful service of our ASNET AM network. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Samuel, um, for your presentation. Uh, I have a uh, few questions for you, if I can. Um, I would like to ask if you have ever used any other Wi-Fi monitoring solution, for example, Wi-Fi controller. No. And if you have uh, spotted any missing features from Wi-Fi monitoring, I'd like to say. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, not use any other Wi-Fi monitoring tool. We have other monitoring tools for our network, like Zabbix or uh, other tools that are just monitor the network. But that uh, information, like like that Wi-Fi mon uh, gives us, we have never uh, can monitor see. So Wi-Fi Mon is unique for us and the first Wi-Fi monitoring tool in our network. Thank you. And uh, if I could ask, uh, which is the most interesting feature that you are using within your setup right now? About Wi-Fi Mon, I would like to say. Yes. Uh, maybe that some graphics I have showed that uh, we can see some stability of our Wi-Fi network and uh, drops and uh, latency some uh, in the pink betrayed that are useful information for our Wi-Fi administrators to uh, see and feel our Wi-Fi network. Okay, uh, thank you Samuel and William for your feedback. Uh, we are going to gather this information and see what we can do better to satisfy you as users, as our users, of course. Uh, thank you all for your presentation. Let's hope it will be uh, useful information. And uh, now, um, if you have any question from the audience, let's use a couple of minutes for this. So it's a question and answer session. Do we have any questions or comments? Yes, Robert. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe I can add some I don't know some some things about future development of Wi-Fi Moon. For example, we think about that maybe it will be possible to have um, the, the user user management in the dashboard. Do you hear me or not? Yes, we yes. do. 
Yes. It will be possible to have maybe user management on the Wi-Fi Moon dashboard. Maybe in this case, it will be possible to have maybe installing different hardware props on the different phones, selecting all of them in the one server, and all of them can maybe log on the, the dashboard and see only their information. In that case, maybe not necessary to installing different WTS and testing servers on many in, in many places. It's maybe suggestion. I don't know if it will be possible. I think will be um, give us more effectivity to using Wi-Fi monitoring system in general. Uh, also, maybe there is another point. Will it be, be possible to connecting maybe the Wi-Fi Mon testing server with uh, currently standard visualization systems also, maybe with Grafana, for example. Maybe some some institution or some organization has already using Grafana and it will be possible to send information also to Grafana to have one general place to see information about network, about Wi-Fi and about some other maybe points. It's also maybe, uh, maybe will be effective to us developing of uh, Wi-Fi mode. What do you think? How you think about, I don't know, maybe Nikos can uh, answering all these technical <laughs> questions, I don't know. Sorry, I, I a bit lost you in the process. The first thing that you mentioned was user management. I'm not sure that I understand what you mean by that. Uh -huh. You mean different files, different profiles to log in in the user interface? Uh, yes, but it mo mainly connected with, for example, for example, we have many organizations connected to Asnet, but maybe for them will be difficult to install in many different WTS servers in, in each organization. But if they will will think about measuring their day by first network, we can installing only hardware props on their territories, but having only one WTS server, which will collect all information on each. But for giving possibility to see, the, to give their um, that organization to see their information on this dashboard, will be possible for organizing the user management and for having difficult dashboard on, on, on the server, to not having one dashboard. I think that this is already available. You could first uh, filter Kibana by using uh, their IP address. Uh -huh. The IP address is their subnet. This is one way. And the second thing is that uh, you could specify a different test tool. Note that in W when the doubt that in Wi-Fi on uh, the server, you you can name the test tool. For example, I could uh, name one test tool uh, speed test. Uh, I don't know, uh, ASNet, and the other name is speed test uh, IIR. Mm -hmm. So th I think there are already some ways to to monitor different organizations. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll have a VC some time to, to test it, if it okay. is okay for your setup. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, for your feedback. Uh, Samuel? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm about the same question. Uh, I want to say that if we just do what Nico said, they, the other organization will see uh, our and other organizations measurements in the same interface, in the same dashboard. Now I get what you mean. You need more multi-tenancy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. No, this is not provided by default. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you can think of something. Uh, I'm not yes. very sure. I, I don't know what to say. Yes, it was my question also. Yes, uh, for having possibilities to maybe, yeah. In well, it, need, it, it requires some thought. Mm -hmm. It requires some thought. Yeah, we will consider all these comments and then uh, try to to see how we can uh, proceed within Wi-Fi mode. 
Uh, any other question or comment? William, yes? Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to touch on the bit about um, monitoring and alerting. So for example, let's say we monitor that uh, a particular uh, probe it may be deployed somewhere, registers a uh, round trip time that is higher or lower than a certain level. Um, I, be, I believe maybe there could be a script that is written uh, since the back end of Wi-Fi one is elastic, maybe there could be a script that is written that um, kind of picks up on that or maybe queries elastic uh, the, the elastic database on, on that data and finds out if a particular parameter has breached a certain level and then sends an alert either through Zabbix, like um, maybe was mentioned earlier, or to email or something like that, so that uh, there's a way someone can get uh, alerted that maybe a probe has registered this amount of performance and maybe something needs to be looked into in a particular area. I think that would be a good feature that uh, some people might want. Yes, thank you. William? Um, any other comments or questions? For me, for Nikos? Yeah, okay. If not, uh, then um, I want to thank you all for participating in this InfoShare. I, will, I hope that the presented information has been useful for you. Uh, for any information, comments or questions, contact us at wifimonops at list.gian.org. Uh, we will be happy to help and cooperate with you. Uh, thank you very much for today and Maybe we will see you soon. Thank you.